Hey, I'm Friendly Baron, and welcome to episode 12 of my series, Casual vs. Speedrun in GTA 5. The speedrun uses C4 that kill themselves after the end of the last mission right away, while the casual looks on the minimap to drive to the next mission. Hang 10 is located all the way down by the beach at Trevor's first Los Santos safe house, so it's a long drive for the casual. The speedrun won't make that journey. The in-game time progresses by a few hours when dying outside of a mission, which gives Franklin time to move around the map while Trevor is technically still in the hospital. We switch to Franklin and is already at the beach anytime you move to him in this part of the storyline. On the phone, the speedrun will start a hangout with Trevor as Franklin. This is a game feature used to do activities like golf and darts with the other characters. Conveniently, it teleports Trevor close to Franklin, so we switch back to him, then you can steal a car and drive straight to the mission, abandoning Franklin. He might give us a phone call later saying he's mad we left him, but it doesn't affect the game's storyline, nor the speedrun if it happens at this point. You can see Franklin arriving in his white buffalo to the hangout as the speedrun just drives away like any friend who wants to avoid all social contact would do. This gets the speedrun to the start of the Hang 10 mission faster, and we have an opportunity to be in a better car as well, instead of Trevor's truck. This is a relatively new strat. We use the drive from just the hospital we arrived to with exploding as Trevor, and the car spawns in that area are pretty terrible too, but sports cars are common in these more central parts of the city. When arriving to the safe house, the speedrun punches up the stairs to skip the forced slowdown walking. The casual is of course following the long path here, twisting through the city. Rockstar's GPS is just slightly more rudimentary than, say, Google Maps. It takes the shortest path but doesn't factor in that it creates lots of turns when doing so, so it may be more interesting to drive that way, but clearly much slower. At this point, the speedrun is already a minute ahead, and they jump once to get into the car quickly and get moving. This mission is mostly just wrapping up Trevor's storyline in Los Santos with Floyd's apartment and then moving to the strip club. Yes, wow, both players are taking a trip there now. In fact, much of this episode is some missions with long drives doing lots of story progression, so it's going to be a rather short video, but that's good so we can get onto the much more interesting missions in the rest of the episodes. The speedrun takes a right then a left, just like we did all the way back in mission 3, Repossession, to get into the southern area of the city quickly, then a right around the gas station onto the same road the strip club is on, with some driving onto the grass and later sidewalks to optimize the drive. You may have noticed the time of day being different for the casual and speedrun right now. That's again due to the death of the start for the speedrun. It doesn't affect the missions at all, but for the 100% run of the game it would matter, as they have to do many random events that do depend on time of day. As well, I want to make it clear that I can't do a casual vs speedrun series on 100%, as it involves lots of warping with taxis, barely completing objectives, and in general it'd be hard to make a compelling comparison as the casual would select such different missions and orders to do things than the speedrun. I may however consider doing a casual vs speedrun highlights that shows just a few of the most differing or interesting changes in that category, but not a full run. After arriving at the strip club, the player is sent to Michael where he is on a phone call with Lester going over more storyline items. The speedrun will just press down to skip the voice lines in the call quickly and hang up the phone right away, while the casual listens to the full call that tells them to head to the strip club as Michael now too. That ends the quick hang tang mission after just 3 minutes for the speedrun, with the casual taking a minute and a half more thanks to the death and then the hangout strat at the start, then a better drive with a nicer car for the speedrun. This next mission, surveying the score, can be started as any of the three main characters, so the speedrun will just switch back to Trevor as he will already be at the strip club. Well, usually, except my last good run where I got the 1 in 100 chance that Trevor is up on a mountain in a dress here that I'm totally not angry about happening. Anyways, the speedrun will be inside or outside here, and if outside, they can use some tricks to get inside a bit faster. They can jump the skip force slowdown walking, then once inside, they shoot the light machine gun as it has the biggest magazine and it lets us jog for a bit inside instead of walking. The speedrun aims down to avoid punching any of the people running out scared, as if you are aiming at someone, shooting, and close to them, it punches them instead. The casual is driving down all the way from Michael's house as that's basically what the game railroads you into doing. The speedrun starts walking even slower now as the combat stance has run out, so Trevor goes back to his drunk stumble. This mission is the characters learning all they need to know about the Union Depository Bank, so we'll be driving and flying around to scope things out. Both players will be set the Michael to begin the surveying, and the speedrun will grab some normal curb boost and brake boost on the drive over. Once arriving at the upper area of downtown, they will pull forward towards the crosswalk, then back up again, just barely brushing the yellow dot that's supposed to bring us to a stop. This pull forward now at 45 degrees, then driving backwards again. 
This lets the speedrunner escape the checkpoint's grasp this one time, and the speedrunner is able to drive ahead to the next location instead of having to wait and listen to the dialogue like the casual is doing now. The dialogue conveniently finishes just as the speedrunner arrives to sit on this arrow where the next checkpoint is, which will let them switch to Trevor who has teleported close to Sandy Shores. Driving to Sandy Shores as Trevor takes much longer, and switching to him before the second checkpoint makes him not travel as far as an AI. After the speedrun switches to Trevor, they blow themselves up the reset to the checkpoint, which puts us already back in the car, already moving forward, and farther along the road than where this cutscene dumps the player. The speedrun has already gained 45 seconds just from the better driving and dialogue skip from the start of the mission proper. C4 used within a mission to kill ourselves isn't a problem since we get them back right away. However, any C4 used within a mission normally or to commit suicide outside of a mission must be counted carefully, as each character has a limited supply. We bought Spare for Franklin back in Blitz play, Trevor usually has plenty, but by the end of the game we will have zero sticky bombs left for Michael, so not using too many is important on him. Though it is only an extra 5 seconds to use a grenade instead, but hey, every frame matters. The speedrun took a direct route to the airfield, while the casual stayed on the street. The speedrun will again abuse a checkpoint by throwing a sticky bomb while still driving, and using it on the helicopter. We end up getting control of the chopper at the same time of the casual, but the speedrun doesn't have to wait for Lester to hobble over and we can just take off right away. Trevor and Lester are headed to track the bank trucks and map their route. The direct path there goes right over the prison, which the game warns you to avoid and the casual panics and nearly crashes to avoid it. The speedrun just goes over it anyways, as you can get the cops and still lose them by the time you arrive at the trucks, even going the max speed of this helicopter. The rest of this flight over to the trucks is nothing special. I'm going to teach you how to fly a helicopter in GTA like a speedrunner now. Hold tilt forward, hold gas, don't crash into anything, and fly directly to your target. Boom, done, easy. I'm such a great teacher. Using those amazing tips, the speedrunning casual arrive to the small cutscene that shows the trucks we are chasing. The casual will be falling behind them, using Lester's view to keep them on target. The speedrun knows the route, so we just fly ahead in their general area, as this section is a good mental break during the grueling 6 hour run, and it tugs the trucks along seemingly just a bit faster when you stay ahead of them. On the speedrun, I like to spin the chopper around over and over as it makes Lester move from side to side in the chopper which is kind of funny to watch. In the 100% run of this game, the speedrun gets in and out of the chopper a few times that grabs some spaceship and letter collectibles and flies under some bridges, but in this class of percent run we don't do anything extra. Hey, if you like the video or have seen my other videos like the playlist of this series in the description, a subscription to my YouTube channel really helps a lot. Thanks to you guys, I can avoid doing clickbait, sponsored videos, or any of the other YouTuber junk. So thanks, I hope we can maintain that here, and I would encourage you to reward yourself with candy if you are already subscribed. The speedrun and casual now hover over the hole for Lester to get his visuals. I often find myself getting too low into this hole during runs, but you can be quite high above it. It's just habit to get as low as possible into the opening, which doesn't actually count as being in the right place. The speedrun will switch to Michael as soon as possible so we can drive to his house to end the mission, instead of flying back to Sandy Shores as Trevor. The casual notices the option to switch to Michael as well, and I'm having them switch for comparison's sake. It's believable they may stay as Trevor all the way back, and then fly to the start of the next mission as Trevor 2, as either Michael or Trevor can begin that one, but just know they would lose about 1 minute in this mission and 1 minute in the next mission if they did so. The casual will turn left early to head to Franklin's house, but the speedrun goes straight a moment longer to do a single turn instead of two hairpins via an off-road shortcut. Driving up this hill is kinda dangerous as you lose control on the jumps, so looking ahead and predicting traffic is pretty important. As both arrive back at the house, the speedrun will park just barely into the driveway to trigger Franklin getting out, but leaving room to drive away. The speedrun will then peel out and be looking for a car to steal, and is lucky to get a 9F right away in front. The casual will be parked straight in and have to back out to head off to the next mission. That's the end of surveying the score, with the speedrun taking 9 minutes and the casual 3 minutes longer, for a pretty lengthy mission due to the long helicopter flight, but the speedrun saves time on starting the mission, skipping the dialogue while looking at the bank, abusing checkpoints twice, and driving back to Franklin's house faster. You may have noticed many times that the speedrun never really changes cars. No matter what we see on the road, even if it's a supercar, coming to a stop, stealing the car, then getting back up the speed takes way too long to have any benefit from the faster car. In this case though, we often get a good vehicle in this area while at low speed, and we can use this car for a pretty long drive coming up, 
Unlike most other times we have the ability to get a different one ends up being a pretty short drive anyways, adding to the not worth it pile. So both the casual and the speedrun are headed to Michael's house to begin the next closest mission, and the casual makes a small detour to go off a jump they will see, which is almost actually faster anyways. The speedrun wants to play it safe and just carry speed through these tight hills, then we'll use the opening in this park to jump down to Michael's house. The speedrun saves the 9F in the garage so it's available for the proper beginning of this mission. At the start of Bury the Hatchet, Trevor steals Michael's car to head to the airport, but as long as the speedrun stores the car, it won't count as the active vehicle and be taken away. Once the mission is started, the speedrun will turn around and then jump through the house to get back to the garage quickly. We could choose either car, but the Feltzer and 9F are close enough it doesn't matter much as they will be used for similar drives, and getting into the 9F is a bit faster since its driver door is already clear. Then we just knock off the driver's door, no reason to wait and close it, and having it off will save just a few milliseconds at the end of this drive when we get out. The casual is showing why we don't want to have to get a random car here. Cars take early turns and often only spawn up top, and it takes them an extra 20 seconds to finally find something decent to drive. This drive is a tough one for the speedrun. Traffic always seems extra mean here, and at such high speeds in a good car, cars jumping out of the crossroads like this can happen often. Luckily it didn't cause too much time loss. The speedrun also wants to be on this sidewalk for a good brake boost, but also has to make sure the not hit peds. Getting cops is bad any time to delay the run, but getting the police after you when headed to the airport is terrible because it swarms with cops more than any other area we have to go to, so you can't even sit close to where the next mission progresses while waiting for them to go away. Once at the airport, the speedrun will stay to the right on the elevated section, getting some curb boosts then pulling into the terminal entrance. The speedrun is careful to manually stop before the center point of the circle here, as going any farther forward can aggro the two cops standing there onto you, causing a minute and a half time loss or more while you lose them. The casual follows the game's suggested path which has you go down to the bottom level of the airport, park your car, then run up the stairs. But that of course is skipped by the speedrun by having just stayed up top with a very premium parking spot. In Bury the Hatchet, Trevor thinks he's figured out why Michael is alive, and that Brad isn't truly in jail so he heads to North Yankton to confirm and Michael follows. Then some of the Chinese gang come to try and get Trevor, but after a shootout will instead take Michael hostage while Trevor flies back to Sandy Shores. This drive with the Asia has some more story information being played over it. Just like back in the first mission, the speedrun will try and stay to the sides of the road as being in the middle slows you down, even though it looks like the snow is piled on the side. There is no curb boost to get, not even from the berms of the snow on the side, so it's a pretty boring drive. The speedrun will take as direct as possible route to run the Trevor digging up Brad. While the casual does a slow shootout clearing all enemies, the speedrun just wants to get back to the car. It's extremely dangerous, but they will run past the first batch of triads, grab a health pack that's to the left of the church stairs, then shoot the handful of guys that could easily kill the speedrun as they turn right back to the car. The speedrun only has a pistol so they use Michael's power for safety. Taking 5 extra seconds to wipe a few extra enemies is worth it, as they can do a lot of damage quickly when all spawned in at once here, and we have to run with our back to them to the car. As well, they spawn in semi-different locations every time, so it's not as consistent as some of the other shootouts in the game. The wall to the right can be used as temporary cover too. This car is the only way to progress the mission. Killing all enemies takes ages, and getting into their vans doesn't help, they just break down a few seconds later. The casual takes their time on the shootout, using cover to eliminate everyone they can. There actually was one death on the casual, but it was due to a dumb reason of an enemy not appearing on the minimap so I edited it out, even though it is a pretty hard mission. So you can just mentally add a minute to the casual's time here to account for a death if you think it would be warranted, but I'm leaving it out since our casual has been a slow, shoot only from cover kind of player this whole time and wouldn't have died otherwise. Anyways, both players are flying back now. The casual enjoys going through the canyon, but the speedrun is all business and stays above 900 feet for the speed bonus, as well as curving around the mountain to take the fastest line possible. We're headed back to Sandy Shores airfield, but can park anywhere on the runway to end the mission, so the speedrun lands right at the edge while the casual will fly all the way to near the hangar where the yellow dot is. Thanks to the better car on the drive to the airport, the much faster shootout by skipping most of it, and landing on the edge of the runway, the speedrun finishes in 7.5 minutes compared to the 10.5 minutes from the casual, for another 3 minute time save, nearing the speedrun the 2.5 hours time saved overall. Pac-Man can be started as Trevor or Franklin, so the speedrun switches back to Franklin right away to get close to the mission in the city. 
The casual also switches after looking at the map to see no nearby main story missions, as they got a text telling them they had a job to do with Franklin on the flight. There are great, good, and bad switches to get here. The speedrun got a good switch, but that's pretty normal, it takes 20 to 30 seconds to drive to Lamar's house on the good switches. The casual got the great switch in traffic right next to Lamar's house, but the speedrun isn't too mad, they have a chance to get that one later still. The speedrun knows exactly where to go without having to finish Lamar's phone call, while the casual has to wait for it to end. The speedrun will park between the yellow Monroe and the building in such a way to warp in and out of the cars. By blocking the doors on Franklin's car, the game has to teleport us out of it. Then we hit the button to get in again while looking at the Monroe, and since the driver door is blocked and Lamar in the passenger seat, the game is forced to teleport us inside. The speedrun will use Franklin's power and curb boost to quickly get over to the truck where Trevor is waiting, taking a direct path with only one turn instead of the snaky path the casual takes. There is no requirement to keep this car undamaged even though voice lines say otherwise, so the speedrun is free to bounce off cars or poles and throw them on row into the back of the truck at full speed, instead of gently driving up the ramp as most sane people would do. The speedrun will now make a high IQ play and make a U-turn. Instead of going up the Pacific Coast Highway like the GPS and voice lines in-game tell you to do, the speedrun will head north out of the city past Sandy Shores. This cuts about 2 miles off the distance estimate in-game, so it's weird that it suggested the Western Highway at all. They must program it to specifically select that road at first during this mission alone. The speedrun will curb boost even this large truck, then cross the train tracks through basically a nice chicane to sneak onto the highway just a bit faster. Then it's just hold gas and wait. It's a long straight, while the casual heads all the way west before even starting to head north. The speedrun sits on the side of the road to get a few more curb boosts, but there's no other tech to do at this point. I always hear complaints about how boring this drive is in this mission during people's normal playthroughs, and sadly it doesn't get better for the speedrun at this point. I'm going to fast forward the casual 2 minutes and 40 seconds to sync up with the speedrun again, which gives you an idea of how much faster the route the speedrun is taking will be. At this point, both players get the cops on them, and the Franklin will begin to get out onto the trucks to get into the silver JB700. It takes him a while to get back, but there's no real danger of him falling off, at least from what I've seen. The casual will be able to switch the Franklin and start taking out cops at just about the start to Polito. The speedrun will wait an extra 20 seconds in real time to switch though, as we can drive the truck faster than AI Trevor does later, so we get greedy and boost it along for a bit longer before switching. Once in the James Bond knockoff, both players have to take out 7 vehicles before they can lose the cops and move on in the mission. However, the speedrun is so close to the end of the mission already that they have very little time to do it, so it's another risky strat like the shootout skip at the end of the last mission. The cutscene when using the spike balls technically does lose the speedrun a small amount of time, but it's so little that the effectiveness of them is worth it to make sure all the cops are taken out. Otherwise, it's a 3 to 4 minute time loss having to do this part again, from the same direction the casual is coming from where the checkpoint is. The speedrun just about paces the truck to keep the cops close to him, and easier to take out. If all goes well, they will clear out and the wanted level will go away just before reaching the gas station on the right. Going any closer than that is about where the mission will fail you for still being wanted. It only matters how close Franklin is to the endpoint, not the truck's location. You can just sit on the edge waiting for the cops to go away while the truck has already arrived. The speedrun will pull up to Molly and hop out next to her to ensure no extra voice lines are played, while the casual has also eventually lost the cops and has some free time on the way over to try and get back on the truck. Right before the mission pass screen, the speedrun will head over to the car that is always parked at the shop here, as by getting into it we'll be able to use it in the next mission to prevent Franklin from being on his motorcycle. That's the end of Pac-Man, and the stats look almost the same as the last mission, just over 7 minutes for the speedrun, and 10.5 and minutes for the casual for about 3 minutes of time save. The speedrun is at a nice 4 hours and 44 minutes of playtime so far as well, as a nice little fun fact there. Thanks for watching! I really enjoy making these videos and I hope you enjoy them too! Sometimes I make mistakes and this is what they look like.